Okay, food security is a word that's banded about, and a lot of people, uh, you know, six months ago I would have said food security, and people would more often say, what, you mean health? Like the security of the health of our food, like BSE or salmonella or something like that? That's the, what they thought of uh, when you talked about this. But food security is commonly, there's a bunch of different definitions, but it's commonly described in this way, that um, it exists for all, when all people at all times have access to sufficient quantity of safe, nutritious, affordable, and culturally appropriate food. And I would add that without degrading, uh, existing, or without degrading supporting systems. Um, and this is whether they're economic or uh, social or environmental systems. You know, it's sort of implied in the one above, but I think that it's important to state it uh, directly. And most of us in this room only have food security because we, have, we live in a stable enough economy and have the money to be able to go and buy food from Tesco's. Um, that's where most of us have food security. And we could say, yeah, sure, that's food security. And most of us in this room might have the knowledge of being able to know what is healthy food and have the cultural predisposition to be able to purchase that healthy food and eat that healthy food. Um, but that's not the case with most people in the world or with a lot of people in the world. Food security is very tenuous and it's becoming much more tenuous with us as we go into the future. Um, there is the existing food security crisis. There is a bunch of factors compounding it. And I don't say you see this as reasons for it or causes. These are factors that are compounding the food security crisis. Speculation on the commodity market is one of the main ones that people talk about. Um, it's what's in all the news. These, you know, these people in uh, the, um, the trading floor of, uh, in Chicago in the commodities market, you know, suddenly they're pushing up the price and they're causing this huge devastation around the world. That part of it. Um, they're not the only ones. They're not the only guilty party. But there's all these different aspects that all contribute in various ways to these things. And most of these aren't temporary blips in the system. Most of these are long-term trends. Um, but I'd like to talk about what are the root causes of food security crises. And this, I think, is much more important because we're talking about it at a systemic level. We're talking about what are the real reasons why we're in this position. And the first one, very generally, is that we have work to reduce the price of food to such an extent that it does not reflect its value. So we're, pay we're not paying farmers, or we haven't been paying farmers, enough to keep them doing farming in an appropriate way, getting a good income so that farmers stay on the ground, stay on the land, so a small family farmer can actually stay in the region. Throughout the developing world and the developing world, there are massive numbers of farmers, and have been massive numbers of farmers, leaving the farmland and bigger farmers or big multinationals taking over or the farmland just being let go as to scrub or to, uh, to other purposes or planted up in trees as it is in Ireland. Every single country has had this issue. This is contributing to the food security crisis. Um, we've also urbanized half the world's population without taking food into adequate consideration. Um, and I'm an architect, I've educated as an architect and this is something I've always been very interested in that we treat food as if it's another goods and service. It's not an essential part of the city, like when you study urban designing, you talk about transport, you talk about energy, you talk about uh, water, you talk about uh, waste, you talk about services and the public space, and you talk about all these things. And you might talk about food, but it's often more with respect to either just another goods and service that's in a shop somewhere or a restaurant somewhere, or it's uh, talked about in terms of the waste. And we don't actually see it as, a, as an essential component of the viability of a city and the food, um, where the food comes from and how it gets to the city and the security of that. That was always an essential component of any city throughout the world. If it didn't have a secure food supply, you couldn't have a city. Um, we have seen efficiency primarily in terms of labor, not energy or other resources. And you can also say in terms of a whole bunch of other things that maybe we, we see efficiency in terms of the, the, the increase in grain yields of um, rice and you know, the green revolution that uh, took, uh, um, took uh, Asia by storm. But we generally see it in terms of labor and more importantly the cost of labor. And we pat ourselves on the back for you know, living in a society that is so rich and so prosperous that we can have 2 to 5% of our population working in the fields and everybody else is doing something else. Um, and we pat ourselves on the back for being able to do that. Um, and that's an increasing uh, situation that's uh, taking, taking place within the developing world as well, either by choice or by force. Um, and this, again, is contributing to the food security crisis. 
Um, we have used systems of production that degrade the natural systems on which we depend. And this would be the soil, or tilling the soil and then uh, having it wash away into the, uh, the rivers, into the Mississippi River. Um, this is putting too much fertilizer on the ground that it burns off all the carbon that's in the ground and burns off the topsoil. This is degrading, pumping too much water out of the aquifers that it, um, we, we can no longer rely on them to feed our rivers that are further downstream. And also the climate system. We are using agriculture, the, the process of agricultural production is degrading the, uh, the climate to the point that it's actually affecting the agricultural production itself. This is again another aspect of uh, um, food security and how it's affecting. The most important, I think, is that we have failed to understand the importance of nutrient and its carbon cycles. And this is going to be the focus of a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about, in that we, we don't see these things in our food. Right? We, go, we might go and buy something because it has so much car carbohydrates and it has so many nutrients and vitamins and minerals and stuff like that, but we don't see that. It's not apparent within our food system. You know, we put nitrogen on the farm fields and we get rid of it at the other end, and it's not cyclical, and this is something I'm going to come back to. And I would state that without a sustainable nutrient cycle, the collapse of the food supply systems is inevitable. It might take a thousand years, it might take 50 years, it might take 20 years, but it is inevitable. Um, and we, just like the Roman Empire collapsed, and it didn't collapse only because it didn't take into consideration its uh, food supply systems or its nutrient cycles, but the Roman Empire expanded, and empires tend to expand partially because they need more and more food. And one of the reasons the, uh, the Roman Empire caused or prompted the, de uh, the uh, destruction of the grasslands of North Africa, the grain belt of North Africa, 2,000 years ago, because, partially because of bad agricultural practices, but partially because they were using the nutrients that were in the soil and shipping them to Rome and not bringing the nutrients back. So if you keep doing that, you're going to lose the productivity of that soil. There you, therefore, you have to go somewhere else to get your food. You have to expand, you have to expand, and that makes it very, very difficult to keep that kind of huge infrastructure going, to keep that food coming into, so into the center. Um, and I believe that we are on the same kind of cusp, only it's a global civilization, it's a global city. Um, because we've pushed farther and farther and farther, and we're continuing to push, and we're degrading as we go along. Um, and this is, I think, the most important aspect of, uh, of our food system and where we get in. Um, just want to talk a bit about, expand a bit more on a couple of these issues about what is our food. And this is a, you know, we see it as a simple system, food in, waste out, very, very simple, right? It, you know, whether it's a city, whether it's our house, whether it's our body, it's just, it's a simple system. The, in the lifespan of the food that we eat, the time that it's in our cities or the time that's in our bodies is actually the shortest stay, the shortest time. It spends more time everywhere else, either in the field or in production or in storage or in processing or transportation or in waste disposal. The time that is actually that we are in contact of it is the shortest, generally the shortest period within the lifespan. Um, but of course, it's a, it's a much more complex system. And I would say that there is eight different aspects of that's in our food. And either these are things that are embedded in our food, like the embedded energy that people would talk about, or the things that, that we need to use our, to uh, produce our food, or the things that are degraded because of our food systems. And some of them are actually like the nutrients are in our food themselves. And then they go to two, three different places, right? They're either sewage, recycling, or garbage. And recycling would be composting in most cases. Um, and it's actually a much smaller portion of it goes to composting globally or within the, uh, the developed world than, than that would show. Um, but I'm going to talk through each of these four, or each of these eight aspects. Um, just to give you an indication of what I would call the, um, the, the food system to understand how it works and why it's a problem. 